Titans, The Hunt for Raven. Take a look at this comic cover right here. Now, The Hunt for Raven is a return to form for the Teen Titans comic, or at least the first step in that direction. See, the Teen Titans comic in recent years has always been changing, whether it be in its characters, its story, or its content. It's not like it was back when the comic got relaunched in 2003 with Jeff John. Now, some people have seen this as a good thing, and some people have seen this as a bad thing. And, for the sake of this video, I'll argue both sides. On the good perspective, with the changing of characters and story and such, you get new characters brought in. Characters like Ms. Martian, Ravenger, Kid Devil, Static, all characters that I've enjoyed and grown to love and really have seen as part of the Titans family. You also get other characters like Bombshell, Blue Beetle, and Aqua Girl who have made their home in the comics. In addition to that, it almost feels as though the Titans team and comic itself always feels like it's falling apart. But in that, it feels as though while they're struggling, you're growing to struggle with these characters. You kind of gain an attachment with them. In addition to that, Wonder Girl has shined here more than she shined anywhere else, whether it's in the Wonder Woman comics, which, to be honest, she wasn't really in that much, whether it's in Young Justice, which she did shine a lot in there, or if it's just in general DC events. In this comic in recent years, it really has flushed out Wonder Girl's character as a complex character who's weighed heavy by her duties, her emotions, and her past. On the bad side, there's no stability. The changing characters and the stories having really no direction really makes it hard for people to get into the comic. In addition to that, there's not that many recognizable titans there for new readers. Some people will know who Wonder Girl is, but not many people will know who Static is, or Blue Beetle, or Ravenger, or Ms. Martian. I mean, if you look at the Titans comics back in the day, you had Robin, Superboy, Kid Flash, Wonder Girl, four, four people right there that you would know right off the bat. And then you had veterans like Cyborg, Starfire, Raven, and Beast Boy to kind of cement it for the older audience, for the older fans. In addition to that, it's hard to really have an emotional attachment to this comic because all these characters are new. They're not the characters that some comic book fans have grown to love in the previous editions for the Titans book. Now, whether you believe the Titans have done good or bad as a comic, it really is null and void because, from what it seems, DC is trying to go back to norm with Titans. Or at least trying to aim in that direction. See, the content of these stories the content of the comics and the characters that are reintroduced here, particularly two comic book characters, Superboy and Kid Flash, return to the Titans book. It all seems like the Titans are trying to aim back to their previous direction. The question is this, is that exactly what the Titans book should do? Should the Teen Titans return to form? Should they go back to what they were six years ago? Or should the Titans book stay in the direction they've been going? Is it too late to go back to where they were, and it's probably better for it just to continue to grow? This is a question which I will answer at the end of this review. So let's start things off with story. The story starts off with Static returning to his hometown in Dakota, and is being pretty much attacked by this virus. Everyone's getting sick, even Static's family. And this is the first time he's gone home since Final Crisis and being abducted and joining the Titans. So, it's kind of hard for him on a personal level, but also on a superhero level. Because one of his old enemies, Holocaust, is trying to make him an ally and showing that, hey, I'm cleaning up this town since you were gone. So, Static is having a hard time readjusting to things back at his hometown and also on the Titans. While this is going on, Super uh, Wonder Girl is constantly in question on her stance as leader. Because Beast Boy is brought onto the team and he's constantly challenging her authority. In addition to that, the Titans just don't know what to do. Without Wonder Girl there, they don't have any leadership or direction. And they feel as though they should go help out Static, but at the same time, they haven't been told to. The Titans are kind of just there. Eventually, what happens in Dakota gets resolved, however, more problems arise. One is Ms. Martian becomes incredibly sick and barely able to stand or think or move at all, almost goes into a brain dead comatose state. Anne Raven is abducted by a demon thing that she created by accident, because you know Raven, she either goes evil, goes missing, or 
she creates something that is evil, and people have to deal with it. That's just Raven's thing, apparently. So the Titans go off and try to save her. But the question is this. Will they actually be able to save her? Will Ms. Martian stay in her comatose state? And at the end of the day, will some Titans still be Titan members? And with the return of Superboy and Kid Flash to this new Titan team, will it shake up the dynamics of the team in general? So all questions that are answered, kind of, at least, for the most part, when you get into this book. Let's get into the good, the bad, and whether or not you can get it. Start things off with good. The return of Kid Flash and Superboy is much welcome, particularly for Super for Kid Flash, because see, Superboy has his own comic, and he gets to actually be in that comic, but Kid Flash has really nothing. But it's still good to see them both there, because they're both characters that I love. And to see them back on the team is just a sense of nostalgia from the earlier Titans comics. I particularly like how they handle Superboy and Wonder Girl's relationship, because they were former lovers, and former girlfriend and boyfriend. And although they still have strong feelings for each other and they're trying to have a relationship, Wonder Girl is very much trying to stand up and be leader and say to Superboy, hey, I love you, you know, you're part of my life, but the Titans is my life too, and while you were gone, I became leader. I can't just step down, I can't just move out of the way and be pushed over. This is what I am. You either have to deal with it or move on. And it's good dynamic and tension, and eventually towards the end, Superboy kind of understands and he steps back and goes, hey, I understand. But it was good dynamic and good tension. It's not like Superboy just came back, they started kissing and everything was okay. There's actually a little drama there. I also like how this kind of returned to form in the sense that it feels like an old George Fred's and Marv Wolfman story. In the sense that with George Fred's and Marv Wolfman's run on the Teen Titans, which is by far one of the best comic book runs you can ever read, I know that sounds cliche, everyone says that, but I can't recommend it enough, how they did things there sometimes was the Titans would start off at point A, and they have to go to point L. But there's all different things in between, and often they get sidetracked and go on miscellaneous adventures. For example, they'll go search for the Doom Patrol, but then Beast Boy will get injured, so they have to bring him to Paradise Island, but then the, the, uh, the Titans come out, or the Titans of old Greek mythology come out, and they make Wonder Girl a, a god, and then all this stuff happens, and it's just a bunch of events that go down. That's fun. It's like an adventure. It's like you're starting off in Florida, and you're traveling to um, Massachusetts, and you have all these different miscellaneous adventures that go on between. And that's kind of what happens in this book, is that they start off at one point, going to Dakota and helping out Static, but they go off on different directions and deal with different things as it happens. Which is fun. It feels like a good old adventure story. It was nice. The art in this was also very good, too. With the exception of Superboy, his hair looks weird. I couldn't really put my finger on it. But the art, for the most part, looks good. Bad. Well, as much as it's good to this, there is bad. First of all, the dialogue is a little shady at times. I was reading it, and I'm kind of just going, that doesn't make sense. That, that, what are you trying to convey to me? If the dialogue, at least in the first story, doesn't work out that well. In addition to that, there's a lot of questions unanswered. Now, some of the questions get picked up in later Titan stories, but some of them also have to be dealt with in the new Static series coming out. For example, I don't want to spoil anything, but certain stuff isn't resolved with two characters, and that material gets brought over into the static comic, which I don't think is out yet, but it's eventually going to be coming out. And there's, there's a bunch of stuff going on with the Titans, which isn't quite resolved. They go somewhere, they succeed in something, but there's still unanswered questions. So there's really no ending to this, per se. In addition to that, although this is a step in a good direction with bringing the team back to the fold, I feel as though as they bring back old members, they're forgetting about the new members that have made things good. It feels as though members like Bombshell or Ms. Martian or Static, who made the comic good, seem expendable when you have characters like Kid Flash and Superboy coming back. Idealistically, for me, the best Titan team right now for this comic would be Red Robin, Wonder Girl, Superboy, Kid Flash, Ms. Martian, Static, and Blue Beetle. Now, whether or not that would happen is debatable. I don't see Red Robin uh, returning to the comic anytime soon for two reasons. One, is he's in his own comic. Two, is actually Robin's in the Titan comics now. It'd be nice, but I don't see it happening. 
I'm just concerned that the, with all these new characters that have been in the Titans comics for quite some time now, they're just going to be forgotten because the old comic book characters come back. Whether or not that's going to happen, we'll have to see. Hopefully it doesn't. Hopefully Titans appreciates all of its members. Whether or not you should get it. Well, I do recommend this. Mind you, there is quite a few faults to it. Particularly the dialogue is just... The dialogue's bad. <laughs> Plain flat and simple. It gets a little better towards the end, but it's just... Ooh, it's not good sometimes. However, it feels like old Titan. It feels good. It feels like an adventure. It, it's fun to see old members come back. Is it perfect? No. But I still recommend this for Teen Titans fans in general. It's worthwhile by... And it's going to cost you $17.99, but you get quite a few issues in it, so it's worth it. So with that said, I'm going to end this review here. This is Andrew saying, peace out for now.